Okay, hello everyone. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, just thought we would get cracking. Um, welcome. Thank you so much for coming along to our Beyond Orientation session. Um, to those of you who are in person um, and those who are online as well, uh, it's great to see you here. Um, so to give you a little bit of context to our presentation, um, we know obviously twice a year um, UQ runs university-wide orientation programs where the uni comes alive with new students uh, interacting with the university and often for the first time. Uh, this is usually the beginning of their first year student experience. Uh, my role as the first year coordinator for the Bell faculty, um, I've worked with my team to enhance the orientation experience for new students. Um, but we started wondering, what impact does orientation have? And more importantly, what happens next? Uh, so knowing across higher education, one in five students drop out in their first year, we wanted to explore what's working and what could be improved with the first year experience beyond O-Week. To do this, we knew it was important to work in partnership with students to better understand their experiences from their own perspectives. We decided to apply to form a student staff partnership project on this topic. There we go. Um, just before we get started, we wanted to um, acknowledge the Yagara and the Turbo people as the original caretakers of the land we're meeting on um, and to acknowledge these lands have never been ceded and this has always been a place of learning. Our approach to acknowledging country is to show you a piece of artwork by um, an Aboriginal artist who lives in Gimme country in Cairns. Um, the artist is Bo Motlop and this image is called Sunbird. We thought it was fitting because First year is about transitions, new beginnings, and this sort of makes us think of new beginnings with the bird flying up. Um, the artist has given us permission to share this piece with you today. And if you want to see more of the art, you can go onto Bo's Instagram handle, which is there on the slide. Thank you. I'll just flip that one across. Okay, great. So now to introduce our team. Um, so as I mentioned, um, I am the Bell First Year Student Experience Coordinator. My name is Beck. Uh, this is my colleague, Jessica. Hi, I'm Jessica, education designer at the Bell faculty, and I think I'm going to hand over to our, we've got two of our student presenters on Zoom as well, so I'll just let them introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Marisha, and I'm a first year science student at UQ. Hi, I'm Kathleen, I'm a second year undergrad mech and aero engineering student. Hi everyone, my name is Carmen. I'm a second year business management student and I'm majoring in business information systems and marketing. Hello everyone, my name is Shashang. I'm a final year business student. Hi, I'm Lee. I'm a lecturer in tourism. Thank you. Um, so we think that's the diversity of our group um, that has made this project a success. Um, we have students from three faculties, as mentioned, um, along with professional and academic staff contributing to this project. Um, we've come together because we have a shared goal to try and improve the student experience at UQ. Um, and I'm going to pass over to Kathleen now, uh, who's going to provide you with an overview of what we've done. Hi, so I'm Kathleen. And when we started the staff student partnership, we um, decided to make a survey and our survey asked a series of questions relating to our first year experience. And the objective was to gain an insight into the advantages and disadvantage of first year university experiences at UQ and looked at both the academic and the social aspects. Um, the survey contained a range of different questions. Some were multiple choice, others open text response. We focused on key areas, including orientation, making and maintaining friendships, and how students experience things academically and socially. And we made sure that the survey didn't take more than five minutes to complete. So you might be wondering, why did we do a survey and not a focus group or other methods of gathering data? It was optimal for our project's short time frame. It also captured students' real-time thoughts as it was done near the end of the semester, so students had time to reflect on their orientation experience. The survey captures the internal UQ experience, unlike the Australian Uni National Survey that's done at the end of the 
year. And it also allows us to identify key areas in which UQ can specifically improve on. And it allowed us to yield a large number of responses across several faculties. We chose different types of question types so we could analyze quantitative and qualitative data to gain richer insights. The survey was active between week 11 and the first week of exam block, and this was an optimal time as students had time to kind of settle into their first semester. And um, we promoted it in three faculties across UQ. Um, and while specifically targeting first year courses um, that a lot of the a lot of students would have to take, for example, Eng 1100 and engineering and Sci 1000 for science. And it was also spread out amongst common first year learning areas. Um, our survey garnered a total of 238 respondents and they were all first year students. Um, they're from like different, a range of different faculties, but most respondents were business students and we also got significant representation from engineering and science. So uh, to talk about orientation, orientation at UQ is a comprehensive program designed to warmly welcome first year students here at UQ. This event aims to assist first year students in familiarizing themselves with the campus itself and addressing any inquiries that they may have. And it may range from any academic concerns or any IT related issues that they might encounter during the semester. An idea of orientation. <laughs> so to give you an idea of what the orientation event usually involves. So first is learning program specific information sessions. These are information sessions that are related to course specific. So these will cover any uh, inquiries on how to enroll in different courses. And if they should defer exams, given any reasons how they can do so. Faculty level welcome events and expos. As you can see in the video, that's an example of how Bell runs its orientation event for its first year students. It also provides an opportunity to connect for first year students Meet others, meet other students who are in a similar program as them, form friendships and bonds that will last from first year all the way till they graduate. They also receive guidance from fellow student volunteers. A bell, the Bell Buddy program is a program whereby students who are in their second and third years come and volunteer at such events and they provide guidance to first year students. It also helps connect with teaching and support staff. And there are various clubs and societies that set up tents and encourage first year students to join. It also provides an engagement with support services, Q&A and drop-in sessions are provided during the orientation events. These drop-in sessions include any, if should students encounter any IT related issues, they answer queries to, they answer these questions to the first year students and enrolling in different courses and stuff like that. We also provide tours of campus. This has become very famous uh, so far in our orientation events, especially here at the Bell faculty where our Bell Buddies provide tours of campuses for first year students. This builds an awareness for it. Another way, sorry, excuse me. Um, we also provide information on how these students can collect their student ID cards as the semester goes. Here are some of the figures uh, we got from the survey that we conducted. 74% of the new students uh, who, 74% of new students attended orientation events, and this was consistent across all the faculties. 75% uh, of those who attended agreed that they had an opportunity to meet new people and make new friends. Out of these friendships, 64% of them were maintained throughout the semester. And this is encouraging as we know that it's very hard to maintain these friendships during the semester as a lot of them do different courses. The other benefits that students highlighted in the survey by attending orientation include getting to know the campus, the closest eat outs and libraries, understanding more about the university environment and learning more about their specific course program. We will now look into the social analysis portion of the survey. So following on from orientation, are these friendships sustained and new connections made throughout the semester? 
Our survey asked students to answer positives and negatives about their social and academic experiences so far. It's important to note that the university experience is different for everyone. And we saw positives and negatives expressed about common themes such as social events and group work. In general, students appreciate the flexibility to be as social as they want. Some students also expressed that they enjoyed attending social events put on by clubs as well as the university itself, which allowed them to make friends and start to build a network of connections. Another theme in the responses was group work, such as discussions and team-based assignments in classes and tutorials, which helped students make friends with people from all around the world who helped them expand their worldviews. So after we asked students about their positive experiences, we also asked them to tell us about their negative experiences as well. Uh, by analyzing the feedback we received from these students, we can gain valuable insights into the challenges uh, that the students face in socializing and connecting with others. So one of the first, uh, the first prominent theme that emerged from the responses is the difficulty students face in meeting new people and forming friendships. Students mentioned that there's a lack of group activities within classes, which hampers their opportunities to interact with their fellow peers and classmates. This limitation can lead to feelings of isol isolation and hinder students' social growth throughout their university journey. Another concern that has been raised is related to social events here at UQ. Students have expressed the limited availability and accessibility of such events and co-curricular activities, particularly for first-year students. Financial constraints and perceived inaccessibility have also prevented many students from participating in these events. Furthermore, it is important to recognize that the social culture on campus may not resonate with all students, especially international students. Many have highlighted that university social activities often revolve around clubbing and alcohol, leaving a lot of these students isolated. This issue restricts students from engaging in activities that could potentially foster meaningful connections and relationships throughout the semester and their time here at UQ. The shift towards online classes has also significantly impacted the social dynamics of university life. Students enrolled in in-person classes have expressed frustration with their peers. This situation raises questions on the decision-making process behind these arrangements and the potential negative consequences they have on socialization within the university community. We will now look at the academic data. So both me and my colleague Lee um, analyzed the positive and negative aspects of the first year academic experience. Um, as you can see on the presentation, many students liked the content they were learning as it was more aligned with their interests and are often different to what was offered to them in high school. Um, a lot of students also like the flexible nature of learning content online. However, some didn't as it didn't hold them accountable for them doing their work. Um, the increased workload was a prominent ne negative aspect as seen by um, the quote on the um, presentation there. Um, and me and Lee gathered from this that more support is needed on teaching students how to read rubrics, doing assignments and breaking it down more for first year students. Furthermore, it was optimal to have both me and Lee analyzing this data as it provided both a student and staff perspective on the data. For instance, a standout quote on a negative aspect was tutors not knowing students' name, um, which can also be seen on the presentation there. From Lee and a staff point of view, it isn't feasible for lecturers to know the name of so many students across so many different subjects. However, from my student point of view, if a tutor is having the same 20 to 25 um, students every single week for the whole semester, it doesn't seem like such a big ask to know and remember everyone's names. And this also came from my personal first year experience from last year in Edge 1100. My project group of six was assigned to a tutor, which also had two other groups. So this tutor probably only had about 18 people each week. Um, and he was our tutor for the whole semester. And by the end of semester, he still didn't really know our names, making it hard for us personally to do CCAT evaluations. And thereon, if a CCAT evaluation isn't done, then lecturers don't know how and who to hire next for their next round of tutors. 
And this hinders lecturers to know which tutors are not great and also raises the question of the hiring process of tutors as it's really only based on students' GPA and lacks focus on their ability and their drive to teach. Tutors may also be drawn to the role due to the monetary factor, which means they may not have making the learning environment a positive one as their priority. So in our survey, we asked students to rate their social and academic experiences on a scale of one to five, with one being terrible and five being amazing. One key takeaway is that the ratings are very closely linked. From the pie chart on the left of the slide, we can see that 87% of respondents, so those represented in the dark blue and orange sections of the pie chart, had a difference of zero or one in their social and academic ratings. So for example, someone in this category might have rated a four for social and five for academic, or three for social and three for academic. The graph on the right shows that on average, the academic aspect was rated slightly higher than the social aspect. Combined, the two graphs tell us we should be looking at both social and academic aspects in an integrated way when it comes to the overall student experience. Someone could have a great academic experience, but a bad social one, which would pull down their overall experience. We know that in modifying their courses for the next semester, many course coordinators typically only focus on improving the academic aspect, like lecture and tutorial content. But as we can see from our survey, they shouldn't neglect the social aspect if they want to improve the overall student experience in their course. Using the data we collected, we tried to identify similarities and diff. Oh, hello. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, using the data we collected, we tried to identify similarities and differences between the faculties, but we only focused on business, science, and engineering because we the sample sizes for the other faculties were too small, so we couldn't make any significant. Um, and uh, any we couldn't get any significant findings. Um, the positive feedback was pretty consistent throughout the three faculties. Um, all three faculties uh, mentioned that students from all three faculties mentioned that group projects and clubs and societies help them make friends. Um, business students mentioned that it was quite easy for them to make friends in class. Um, yeah, um, on the academic side, um, business and science students mentioned that they really enjoyed the content and the knowledge they learned from their courses. And science and engineering students um, were very impressed with how helpful their tutors are. Um, the engineering faculty is also recognized for the high quality of their lectures and assignments in their first year courses. Um, however, on the negative side, um, business students mentioned that um, there were too many online and pre-recorded classes, so they didn't feel really engaged throughout their first year. And there was also an over-reliance on textbook readings that they felt like they couldn't really keep up. And I personally agree with this one. Um, a lot of um, the students also mentioned that they struggled to the develop lasting friendships because um, they have like they meet a different group of people every semester um, yeah and for the engineering side um, the classes the first year classes were huge so they struggled to make friends and this made socializing really difficult Um, a lot of the students also mentioned that they struggled to keep up with content. Um, for science, um, there was a sense of separation amongst the students, and a couple of students also mentioned that it was quite difficult to get support from the teaching staff. Okay, so just to kind of pull together some of the key points that, that we felt came out of this, um, it seems to us that orientation on the whole is working um, as a first year experience. 
but are we really carrying that into the first year classroom? And, and I think that's maybe where the challenge is. Um, students are saying that in-person classes are providing a good opportunity to socialise. So should we still be having online and pre-recorded classes in the first year? I don't know. Um, students are also saying that they're happy with the quality of staff, tutors and lecturers, um, which is interesting because that's something that when Kathleen and I were doing our academic bit, I kind of pulled out as yay for us. Um, Kathleen didn't even mention it. So anyway, um, so just different perspectives, which is the value of this having different perspectives on this project. Um, but as Kathleen was saying, is there a better way to train and screen our tutors? Um, it's really important who we have in front of those first year students if we want to carry that through. And students are happy with the content, stuff's probably not a good word, that they're, use, uh, that they're learning. But can we communicate the relevance of this better to first year students? Often they're in generic classes. How do, they, how do we make sure they understand the relevance to their area of interest? Um, and can we do a better job of helping our students transition essentially from high schools? So do we need to put more scaffolding in place? Kathleen was talking about unpacking rubrics for students so they understand what they are, how you use them, those types of things. Shall we go to the next one? So you've been listening to us for a little while. So what we're going to do is just at your tables um, and on Zoom, you can go into um, two breakout rooms. We wanted to think about what you've heard today. Um, I've put a few discussion prompts on, but we're going to give you 10 minutes if you can just have a discussion at your table and think, um, what did you think about our findings? Do you have any questions for us? Or do you have any ideas for us as we continue our research about how we can improve things um, for first year students academically and socially? And any questions that you have, you can note them down. There's some paper on the tables if you're in the room or if you're on Zoom, you can make a note yourself or put it in chat. And then in 10 minutes, we'll come back together, share, and then we can also take a couple of questions then. We can go to a table. Yeah. Shall we each go to one first? Four tables. Okay. You want to go with me? Yeah. We can go together if you like. That's just cool. So we go now or do we just like Did you make one big one, Jess? Yeah, I made one big room, but just because I don't think there was enough people for two rooms. Oh, okay. I was like, we could. Okay, yeah, yeah. cool. You can go in there, yeah.
Hello. Okay, so we're just going to um, wrap up our discussion element, and we've got a few minutes that we can share. So I might actually, um, first of all, pass over to our colleagues on Zoom and just see if anyone on Zoom would like to share a comment, a suggestion, or a question that they might have for any of our presenters today. I'll just add something quickly, Jessica. Thanks. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I, we were just talking about, I mentioned our tutor interview program that we have and our tutor training day, yes. just to address that issue around tutors and tutor training. So you're familiar with that. So whether you want to comment on that or at all, might be useful for someone. Yeah. Just if anyone doesn't know Carl, he works in economics and they have um, got a really great training program for the tutors in there where they do talk, like talk to them about ways to facilitate discussions in the class and get everyone involved and it's been a, a model that's working really well for interactive learning but as we were talking about a few of the tables we don't have that everywhere across UQ so maybe that is a model that we could use um, sort of across the university more widely. Um, did anybody else on Zoom have a, a question comment or what were you talking about on there? Okay. I, oh, I think um I joined a breakout room without any people in it. So I was like, where is everyone? But <laughs> yeah, um, I think that was the thing because I personally was hired as a tutor within the engineering faculty and we didn't really have that kind of um I guess maybe we did have a tutor training day, but it wasn't as extensive as you would think, you know, if if somebody is to guess teach a classroom of students. Um, as a teacher, they'll go through a three-year kind of education degree. So with us, we only really had, I think, two or three-hour tutor training. That was kind of a topic that me and Lee, um, Lee, who's a course coordinator as well, kind of um, looking at tutors, how can we better kind of screen and, I guess, hire tutors because who we put in front of the first year students are very important. It's the first impression of what uni is like. So um, that's what we kind of um, discussed on. Maybe there must be, we should have kind of like a standard tutor screening um, kind of requirement across all faculties at UQ. Yeah, great. That's a really good point. I might actually hand over this table because you were talking about some great ideas for tutors and support for tutors. Did you want to make a comment? I might actually give you the microphone just so everyone in Zoom can hear you. I think we were discussing the tension between budgets and tutor training and tutor hiring. Uh, and so our suggestion was maybe we can just keep our attention on first year for now. So we know that often there is no week one tutorial and that really is often just a budgetary decision or a, this is how we've done things. Um, and sure, maybe we don't need to pay tutors to have tutorials in every semester of every year because that does blow your budget but maybe there's a, uh, a decision made that it's important and in fact has a significant impact in first year to pay to have a tutorial in week one and to have some training so that that week one tutorial is a positive, safe, engaging experience for students, for example. Does that cover the point you were hoping for, Jess? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I do think a focus on first year in the first instance would be good because it is the, it is the time as we mentioned that students are most likely to drop out and even though UQ dropout rate is pretty comparable to average in Australia it's actually quite high in a worldwide um if you look at it comparatively 
the first year dropout rate for students in Australia is double that of the UK. So there's obviously ways that things can be done better. It is a different context, but I think there's room for us to improve. So that could be a first place to start. Does anyone else have a um, comment or a question for any of our presenters that you'd like to share? Oh, I'll just give you the mic. I think um, I think we also sort of followed a similar theme that um, our conversations were very heavy on the tutor side as well, um, but also the social and academic side. So um, being able to um, integrate them, I think we will, I think not having online um, lectures and actually having, you know, in class face-to-face -face, um classes and then being activities where they can actually meet other students is something that could help along with everything that everyone else has said definitely we were talking as well about the not having tutorials in week one um we could do that in first year and do specifically only about social connection chris here you go sorry this table spoken before but i feel greedy um so I think I think what would be interesting is to dive a little bit more into the um, pre-recorded versus online side of things and what's really turning people off there because there's one of our schools do does a lot of pre-recording stuff as well and and I have concerns about that um, and a second thing I, I was I was um, actually very pleased to see well I was sad but pleased to see that. Um, that there was some feedback about um, students feeling there wasn't enough group work in classes. Um, one of one of the frustrations, I'm a learning designer and one of the fr frustrations of my life is I often get pushback from academic staff that students hate group work. Um, and and, and I, I think it's driven by uh, one or two students complain about an assessed group work activity and and, you know, it, it it ruins the um, ruins the staff members' day, ruins their year, and they they you know they they worried about the impact on CCATs, and they just don't do group assessment anymore. So I think maybe we need to um, yeah maybe as learning designers maybe look a bit into you know what that is there a myth there and how do we pick that apart? Sorry, that was too much. Sorry. Yeah, I'll just bring the mic over to Lee. Here you go. Thank you. Just on that point about group work, um, which I'm, I'm a lecturer and, and I teach first year students, um, I'm wondering how much of that's around scaffolding. How much are we teaching students what a team is, what their role is in a team, what their strengths are, what they bring to it, how to work in a team? And I'm wondering, yeah, it, how much of, of that comes back to first year course coordinators talking to each other? Where are we teaching students these skills? Where are they building on them? So. Can I also say collectively, I actually asked students, I'm a first year uh, lecturer as well. Um, I gave them the option of doing group work or uh, individual. We found all domestic Australians wanted to do it themselves. I found most Asians wanted to do it collectively. So I think if we're looking at first year, we probably need to say where they're actually from, whether they're domestic or international. So, yeah. So um, I think, yeah. Well, I think your point goes back to what we said at the beginning. Everyone has a bit of a different experience, but I think working with other people is a skill that I think we could all benefit from you know, <laughs> doing some of. Did you have a, a point? Yeah. I just wanted to say from a science perspective, first years all have a three hour practical every or most weeks. And it's not, the only thing that's assessed is have they prepared, do they participate? And they all have to do some experiment together in a group of 16. Sometimes we even split them into eights. And that works really well. It's not accessible. There's no pressure. And they actually have talk to each other while they're doing it. So I don't know about engineering and uh, business, but. Well, maybe we can see, do any of our students, presenters here, have you had that experience where you've had to actually work on something together in class? No, let me see, there we go. No, uh, John, do you have a question? Oh, just gonna add to Lee's comment really. Um, sometimes people think, oh, we'll just put them into groups and it happens and it doesn't. <laughs> and you wonder why. Um, so part of, and this is probably related to the comments on tutor training as well, that we actually 
need to train people on how do you implement group work you know like there's a pedagogy with socializing the group and um you know it could be icebreakers it could be all sorts of things and then scaffolding its way to the actual task Thanks. I think these are great points. And what you've said goes back to like one of the definitions of engagement I use is that it's engaging students in an educationally purposeful activity. You're getting them to do something together for a reason that they're going to learn. It's not just sort of a random activity to get them talking to each other, but that's there is a reason for it scaffolded into your course. And it also, you know, looks back if we our survey was a UQ one, but if you do look at that national data, one of the lowest scores in the whole thing for student experiences how many opportunities you had to interact with students that were different from you in your in your program or your in your experience and I think the number nationally is something like 20 something percent said yes and I think that is really sad and just not not good for a future so I think yeah ideas like what you've said would probably work really well did you have a comment I'll just give you this so zoom can hear yeah sorry yeah I just wanted to share um some of the things that we talked about I have I've only been with UQ for six months now. So my experiences come from another university and what we had implemented for first years. Uh, one thing we talked about was um, student consultation or when even in class, uh, first year students um, are usually quite scared to ask questions. Um, so what we used to do is a group drop-in session twice a week for first year students, but it wasn't just for the one first year course, there were several first year course staff in the room. So whether that would be the coordinator that went or the lecturer or the a tutor. And um, yeah, it was just a big open room and they could just find who they wanted, which course the person they wanted to talk to and we'd have like tea and coffee and biscuits and they could come um, individually or as a group. So they just, it felt more like a comfortable space for them to ask questions. Um, what else was it that we spoke about? I mentioned something else. That, oh, that's right. Um, I, I, I've noticed, um, that a lot of first year students can, um, fail the first year courses. I don't know what that's like across all of the, um, uh, everyone else's course, but there's quite a high percentage. Um, and we used to have a program where, um, if you failed a course, you could, buddy up or it, I don't know if there was a program also if you didn't fail but the one that I was associated with you could buddy up with a past student and they would help you to understand content in the course or they could go with you to the lecture to help you take notes um, if you were struggling with trying to do all of those tasks at once or um, show you how to um, interpret an assessment question and things like that. Thank you. Those are great ideas for drop-in support and peer-to-peer -peer support. And also in some universities, they've done it where the first year doesn't actually count. So you have a bit of flexibility, not, not to fail everything, but it doesn't really matter what grades you get in first year. It's to let students get used to it, to try things out, to learn how everything works. And then actually later, you know, in the, in the program is when it matters more. So it gives them a bit of the sort of safety net that might help with that big transition from high school or wherever you're coming from into first year. Yeah. I'll just keep uh, I also used to have um, tutorials in the first week and they weren't to do any coursework. It was purely just for social. So we'd introduce the course, uh, introduce ourselves do icebreaker activities and also tell the students what services were available to them um, and what workshops they could be attending to to get their skills up in that week before they go to the tutorials. Yeah. I think that's good because also some feedback we got from students generally is like there's so much information in orientation week and you can't remember it all and you actually need reminded throughout the semester okay well actually I need help for this at this point where will I go I think those are great ideas were there any other comments questions was there another thing <laughs> you'll have to come and meet with me <laughs> did you have... yeah did you did you want to say the last one yeah uh, sorry, um, we also, we would also um, on, uh, we, not Blackboard, I can't remember what the program's called, because it's Canvas, that's it, Canvas. Uh, we would take photos of ourselves and 
um, comment on things like what we do, what our hobbies are, uh, any pets we have, what our favourite food is, and then encourage students to do the same. And I was actually really surprised at how many students, but I did this last semester, uh, not, sorry, semester two last year, uh, yeah, how many students actually posted a photograph of themselves and commented and, and um, I thought perhaps there might be a function in its, its ed discussion board or ed discussion board I'm just learning what that is now maybe that you could do that in the social um, function of the program actually just this morning I was working with a course coordinator on doing that you can put a, a padlet into your course blackboard site and she was asking everyone to add a photo and then their name and then a few you know a little of an intro about themselves and you could do it in your course or if your course is huge you could do it in tutorial groupings but it was a way of everyone getting to know each other okay have room time for one more comment and then we're going to wrap it up yeah I mean if we're talking about um it looks like the social aspect orientation fantastic not flowing quite over into the academic um, what we do see or what I do see a lot of is um, the opening message in uh, Blackboard, which is like, welcome to the course, read the ECP, see you on day one, you know. So, but there are also, I've seen some fantastic examples here at um, Economics um, where you've got the Padlet or they use the Ed Discussion Board and they do things like uh, tell us a bit about yourself and reply to two other students on the board you have to you know those sorts of things or finding out not just about their hobbies but um even about um ways they like to participate you know as well thank you yeah, it's very good uh just to wrap up we do have a qr code on the screen if you have a moment we'd love your feedback on our session uh, you can scan that it's just a really quick survey but just to finish up i'd also just really like to thank uh, the partners that worked in this project with me lee and beck and carmen shashank kathleen and marissa it's been so good working with you and getting student perspectives and staff perspectives so thank you for all your work and thanks to everyone for joining today and being so willing to discuss with us thank you Well done. That was really good. You guys were great. Thanks so much. I can't see how many, but how? We've got one, two, three. It sounded like a lot of people. Well, like 17 people in the room. I know I realized I should have told you when we started because you couldn't see, but we've got about 17 people in the room and then however many were on Zoom. So it was really, it's been really good. Yeah. That's good. Thank you so much, Jess. Thanks. Thanks. We'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Thanks, Marissa. You're brilliant.